Hello, my beautiful friends. Namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of Newit Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of January the 29th, 2024. We wrap up this month with a week that is pretty powerful. And, and there really are a lot of beneficial flows of energy this week to tap into. So this is a week to get yourself organized and prepared for the challenges that will be sure to arise mid and end of February. It is quite a month, all right? So uh, let's hop into the astrology of this week. Remember that toning this whole time, we have this beautiful little sextile, a, a little blessing connection between Jupiter, the planet of abundance and opportunity, and Saturn, the planet of structure and time and um, rules. And so this is between Taurus and Pisces. And so there's something that's being locked in in that area of life for you. You're going to see it. It's going to be like a little under undercurrent um, over these next several weeks. And it's been in play and it's going to stay in play, right? It's, it's, it's unfolding very slowly. So lean into the positivity. Lean into whatever that little opportunity is that's showing up for you between those two areas of life. All right. We also want to keep our eyes peeled for synchronicities and magical happenings because Uranus, uh, the planet of synchronicities, of the internet, of the masses, so to speak, and of uniqueness is moving direct now, just started over the weekend before this week commences. But as it moves forward, it, it picks up a beautiful energy um, to Mercury, which is kind of moving past this connection, but it's also moving into this beautiful connection with Mars. And so Mars and Mercury are pretty close together as we start the week off. And so in comes this energy from Uranus of awakening. There could be just incredible opportunities that arise, shocking things that occur, right? So hold on a little loosely. Don't try to oversteer the ship and look for those magical moments as they begin. Now, we also have a little bit of a stressor there because that Mars is still clashing with the nodes of the moon and with Chiron. And so this is really pushing us in some way in our relationships, our interpersonal relationships with those nodes and that like individual Aries and uh, pair bonded Libra axis of our chart. Right. So there's a great healing potential here, uh, you know, over these coming weeks and I think part of that part of that square is going to help to show us where the where the wounds are, where the pain is, where the hurt is so that we can work on it. All right. Now, as we move on, um, we've got a couple really long moon voids this week. I want you to pay attention to. So on the 29th, the moon voids at 620 p.m. Eastern until 304 a.m. the next day. All right. So, you know, go ahead and adapt that for your time zone. On the 30th, we have the exact connection between Mars and Uranus. So really, like, look for that magical Earth synchronicity. This is between the Taurus and Capricorn areas of your life. Remember, Pluto has spent years plowing, plowing that field, right? So what's showing up now that Mars is showing you? You need to take action on this luck piece that flows in this this thing that happens that you could never have believed could have happened, right? And there you are, you're needing to really do something practical to adapt to it. All right. On January 31st, we are paying attention to that Aries area of our life because Chiron is beginning to walk together with that North node in Aries. They are coming so close together. And so this is really um, uh, dealing with our issues around independence, our issues around um, anger, issues that we might have where we just figure we're going to do it ourselves or we don't want to be in partnership with somebody, right? It's really going to highlight some of those things. And yes, there are times when we have to do things ourselves, but there's often, uh, often uh, we need to learn how to work with others, to be a good partner, to be um, a person that is not just in a support role, but uh, has a has a beautiful partnership with our person, whether that's a lover or a, a business associate. So those kinds of things are really going to be highlighted the whole week. All right. Now, on the 1st of February, 
We have a lovely little sextile, just a little blessing beam that goes from Mercury, which is the mind, right? It's in Capricorn over to Neptune, which is also in Pisces. Neptune and Saturn are both in Pisces. This is just kind of a, like a little bit of a practical, magical thinking moment that could come through, which is really fantastic. And we have another moon void, long moon void, 4.03 a.m. East Coast until 3.37 p.m. East Coast. So that whole day until you get to after 3.30 in the afternoon East Coast, moon void, right? Floaty, inspired, dreamy, but not good for really initiating things that you want to have continuity, all right? On the second, um, I'm just asking you to tap in for a moment and really see that beautiful Mercury, Neptune, feel into the beautiful Jupiter, Saturn energy, really look at that Pisces area of your life and see where those blessings are showing up for you and what you need to take action on in order to experience those blessings. On the third, we have another moon void, 1024 p.m. until 128 a.m. on the fourth. That's Eastern Standard Time. And we wrap up the week with Chiron and the nodes really clashing with Venus in Capricorn. All right. So those kind of uh, tensions that you might feel at the beginning of the week in those relationships, Martian energy clashing with it. It's a little different when you get to the end of the week and it's really more about the tender parts of you. It's about what you value and it could even be about your money. All right. So for this week, I'm going to say that the um, three ways to to engage in the highest vibration with this week is number one, embrace earth energy. Be everything earthy. Be practical. If you're not sure what to do, go outside. Walk it out, you know, hug a tree. Get yourself grounded. Do some like low to the ground yoga or whatever. But really think about what's practical for this week. Number two, commit to healing and soul growth. You know, where it hurts is going to come up, all right? And some people really do, instead of working on their stuff, you know, recognizing that there's a problem, recognizing that there's pain, instead they go to the other side of it and they just lash out. They get angry. They get mad. They hurt other people, right? What's the quote? Hurt people, hurt people, heal people, heal people. Uh, so really move towards that, take action, whether you need to get a therapist, whether you need to sit down and have a conversation with your beloved, whatever it is, do the work. And finally, get organized. This is a week to really apply your good Capricorn skills. Got a, quite a bit of energy there in Capricorn with Mercury and Mars and Venus, right? All working away in that area of your life. Be, get yourself organized because when things start to hit uh, mid to late February, it's going to be a little destabilizing, I'm afraid to say. So um, just get yourself organized this week. Now, three things that you need to keep an eye on. Try to, you know, soften the karma a little bit. Number one, ignoring synchronicities. Some magical thing happens. Somebody suggests you talk to somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, they're the exact person I need right now. Oh, but I'll talk to them later. Or I'll deal with it later because I don't, you know, whatever. Don't ignore the synchronistic things that happen. These magical things happen all the time, right? And the more we can be aware of them, the more we can take advantage of them, the more we're in the flow with the universe, all right? So don't ignore those magical things when they happen, particularly at the beginning of the week. Number two, don't be the lone wolf. Don't be off just, you know, I'm just gonna do it myself. I mean, nobody understands me. You know, I nobody does it the way I want, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, no. You gotta, you gotta learn to play well with others. You don't come here to this planet to, you know, to be a hermit. You know, uh, even if you're in a cave, you're interacting with your, uh, you know, with a, with the higher beings. And you know, this is the realm of duality. And so, don't withdraw. Okay, don't withdraw into your own little corner this week. And then finally, sacrificial partnerships. You've been seeing that. You've been seeing where you're like smiling and nodding and it's not what you want at all, but you're going to do it anyways because you're a good little girl or whatever. You know, any of that self-sacrificial stuff has got to end. Now, you don't have to be cruel. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. But sacrificial partnerships don't work. And I've talked about this many times. In fact, I have several videos on this, but it's like 
Sometimes we train people to take advantage of us. We teach them that inequity is equity. And I have done this all my life and I'm trying not to do it anymore. I, I, I had certain people in my life. I was like, well, that's okay. I'll do 70. You do 30. That's fair. Right. Cause I'm, I'm a helpful, good person. And then, you know, I'm like, happens if I like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm overwhelmed. I have a lot going on. Could we, maybe I'll do 60 of the work and you do 40. And they're like, you know, you're so selfish. It's like, no, no, I'm not. I caused that problem by not setting appropriate boundaries. You see that? So, um, so be sure to not engage in those sacrificial partnerships or begin to untangle yourself from them. If you find yourself in those situations. All right. Well, we got this. Um, feel free to comment below. I always appreciate hearing from you. I, once again, I have run out of time to do the tarot and I would love to hear from you. If you would like me to pick back up with the, um, the Isis Lotus tarot, I'm actually thinking about adding the 12 house tarot to the end of this uh, reading instead contemplating that. So let me know your comments below. Be sure to check out, I'm, I'm doing some work with Odyssey, the platform, and my dear friend, Ann Bayford. Uh, I'm gonna have a February forecast over there and I have a, a couple of fun events coming up there. I also do have a new life transformation group that is forming online, um, it's self-paced. Uh, one uh, one um, uh, email goes out a week that has a lesson for the mind, the body, and the spirit. So it's an eight week course, um, magnificent course, really great. Um, one of my, uh, one of my oldest things that I've uh, been teaching for 15, 16 years now. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope you will check that out. I also have one more thing to mention. I'm having a workshop next month as well, uh, called healing faith, which is really about understanding your previous faith practices, spiritual beliefs, and how to embrace what you want to keep, let go of what you no longer believe and step into your full, um, spiritual potential. So I hope you'll check that out as well. Have a wonderful week, my friends. Namaste.